Hey, what's up guys? My name is Javier and welcome back to Tool Craze. So a while back when I got my bandsaw, one of the first products that I made with it was building a bandsaw box. This little tiny bandsaw box right here was my very first one. And when my grandma seen it, she immediately wanted this one. So instead of just giving her this one, I made her one. Then when my uncle seen the one that I made for her, he wanted one. So I decided to make him the one that we have right here. So everyone seems to love these little bandsaw boxes and they make great gifts as I learned the hard way. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to build your very own bandsaw box. The reason they're called bandsaw boxes is because you start out with a block of wood and you make all the cuts with a bandsaw. If you plan on gifting one of these to your family, to make it easier on yourself and others, you might just wanna call them jewelry boxes unless you wanna get into a long conversation about what exactly a bandsaw box is. So anyways, one of the signature features of a bandsaw box is that the whole thing is made out of the same block of wood. Out of the same block of wood will come out the body, each of the individual drawers, and even the drawer handles. So if you don't have access to a solid block of wood, you can make your own by stacking several pieces of wood to whatever thickness you'd like. For this build, that's exactly what I did. I got me four feet of five and a half inch wide, three quarter inch red oak, and I cut into several sections with my table saw. Then you stack them all together using some good old wood glue, And once you got them all in place, clamp them down using several clamps. This is actually the tricky part because the glue causes the boards to slip and slide as you try to clamp them. So the best method I've found is to apply very little pressure on the first clamp and do the same for each other clamp until you have all the clamps in place. Then tighten each clamp a little bit at a time. Do your best to keep the boards as even as possible, but don't worry if they're not perfect in the end. A little bit of unevenness is not really a big deal. Also, don't worry about the glue dripping down the sides of the block as this is all going to be cut away with later. Once they're all clamped up, let the glue dry completely. Look at the directions from your glue bottle for appropriate drying times. Then once it's all set, you now have your blank block of wood. The next step is to mark the design on the bandsaw box. You can make just about any shape box. I mean literally any design. I've seen all sorts of box designs including animal shapes, shapes of tools, and just about anything. But for this video, I'm going to stick to more traditional design with three drawers. It's a design I've been using since my first bandsaw box and everyone seems to like it, so I'm using it again. Then once you got your design ready, the next step is to make your first cut on the bandsaw. The very first cut we're going to make is to cut off a layer from the back. You want your cut to be as straight as possible, so use a fence for this step. This piece that we just cut out is the back side of the bandsaw box, so put it away for now. Now comes the fun part where we cut out the drawers. Because we're using a bandsaw to cut out the drawers, there's no way to get the blade in there and cut out only the drawers. So we need an entry point from the outside of the box. I marked three entry points as you can see here, which is one for each drawer. Another thing I recommend if you're making a bandsaw box with two drawers or more is to not make all the entry points on the same side. Make sure to distribute them evenly on both sides. With the drawers cut out, we need to hollow out the inside so that they become actual drawers. Using the bandsaw with a fence, cut out both the front and the back sides of each drawer. After that, we're left with the middle section of the drawers. This is the part that's going to be hollowed out. First put your drawers back together and remove the front section. Then with a pencil we're going to mark the bottom and the sides of each drawer, which is one piece. The middle top section is all waste and this is the part we're going to remove. Repeat this step and mark the other drawers. Then take those pieces over to the bandsaw and cut along the line where we just marked each drawer. Now we've hollowed out each drawer piece. But before we put the drawers back together, take the drawer bottoms over to the sander and sand only the interior of these pieces, not the outer section. We're gonna sand the outer section later after we've assembled each drawer. Then gather all your drawers and now it's time to glue them up together.
after you've clamped them, there's going to be a bit of glue squeeze out. Leave the glue alone and let the glue set for about 10 minutes. Then scrape out the glue on the inside of the drawers. Now it's time to glue up the frame of the bandsaw box. Before we can attach the back side, we have to first close up the side opening of the frame. This is the tricky part because you have to get glue up in those thin little gaps. I use a thin piece of cardboard and apply glue on that. Then you have to spread the gaps to get the glue in there. Make sure to get as much glue in there as possible. And once everything is glued up, use clamps and make sure to tighten them as tight as possible. The tighter the clamps are, the less noticeable these gaps will be. I didn't show you in the video, but also make sure to get rid of any glue squeeze out from the interior of the drawers. Then let everything dry completely. So the next step is to attach the back side of the bandsaw box frame. Make sure there's no leftover glue on the back side of the bandsaw box frame. If there is, now's the time to remove it. Then place some glue on the back and spread it around evenly. Place the back of the box over it and make sure that it lines up. And then clamp it into place. When you clamp it, it's extremely important that the two pieces don't slide from each other. So make sure that they stay in place when clamping. Then let the bandsaw box frame dry completely. Now that the drawers are glued up and the glue is set, it's time to clean them up a bit. Before we sand them, we're going to remove any glue squeeze out with a chisel. Then take the drawers over the sander and sand the sides and the bottoms of each drawer. Then using the leftover piece of the core of one of the drawers, we're going to make some drawer handles. I chose to make round handles, but you can make them square, triangles, or whatever. Draw out the shapes first, then cut out the whole section of the layer with a bandsaw, and then cut them out individually. Then take the drawer handles over to the sander to refine their shapes. I use the sander to finish and round over the initial shape, and then to round over the edges. After that was done, they were still a bit rough, so I did the final sanding by hand to smooth them out. First with 80 grit, then 150, then 220. After the glue dried on the bandsaw box, it was time to make the last few cuts to bring out its final shape. Then take the box over to the sander to refine the cuts you just made. After this sanding, we're not done just yet. If you place the drawers back into the bandsaw box, you'll notice we have a bit of a problem. Notice how the drawers are sunken in. This is because we took out two thin layers when we cut the front and the back sides of each drawer. So to fix this issue, I grabbed my belt sander and sanded the front of the bandsaw box with the drawers in place until the whole front was even. Then I used my random orbit sander with 150 grit paper to finish the surface. Our next step is to round out all the outer edges. I took the bandsaw box over the router table and rounded out the back with a quarter inch round over bit. And I also did the same thing to the front of the box. You can also do the same thing to the openings for the drawers. If you don't have a router or a router table, you can also do the same thing with files and file out the outer edges for the rounded out. And don't forget to round over the edges for the drawer fronts as well. And after that's done, the next step is to do the final finish sanding on just about everything. 
With the final sanding out of the way, now it's time to glue the drawer handles into place. Let the glue squeeze out dry for a few minutes and then scrape it out before it hardens. Then let it set till it dries out completely. At this point your bandsaw box is almost completed and is ready to be sealed. I wanted to add some color to the box so I stained it. But if you like the way it looks as is and want to keep its natural tone, you don't have to stain it and can proceed to applying the finish. So for the finish I like using wipe on poly as it's easy to work with and it leaves a nice finish. For the first coat I mix one part wipe on poly and one part boiled linseed oil. After that coat was set, each other coat was only wipe on poly, with a total of four coats on my box. So after you sealed your bandsaw box it's all ready for use. It makes a great jewelry box, a conversation piece, and makes excellent gifts as everybody loves these little guys. And if you want to make these little boxes even better, you can line the inside of the drawers with a suede-like material like flocking fibers, or as I did with some self-adhesive felt. This really enhances the look of the box and it makes it more refined. So let me know what you guys think of this little bandsaw box in the comment section below. And thank you guys for liking this video. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to follow me on social media over at Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus, and over at the web at toolcraze.net. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time.